Welcome to my garden studio. We're going to do a bowl of fruit. Very simple, very easy to do. And uh, we'll just have a look and see. What I want to do, um, I'm working on this piece of paper, normal photocopy paper. And I'm going to give myself a, an orientation. Okay, which is just about there. Yeah, and then my bowl of fruit is going to be viewed from almost from the top. So the principle that I want to point out here is that the, the symmetry of the bowl. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to fold this paper in half and I'm going to give it a texture of charcoal so that I can get the symmetry very 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 easy actually very easy I'm just getting a symmetry of it to get the background in and just dust this off it doesn't really matter if this is in okay what I've done is I've got a background here of burnt sienna and the burnt sienna is giving me a tonal value of about 30% I would say. So now what we're going to do is fold the paper and get the symmetry of the bowl. First get the bowl in and then putting four apples into the bowl is going to be pretty easy. So we know that we know that the bowl should be kind of symmetrical, kind of symmetrical. So what I've done is charcoal the back of the board of the paper and I've folded it in half and there are a number of ways you can do this. Just a normal piece of paper, one can take it and cut it with a pair of scissors. Okay, so we're going to go a little bit like that, get the base of the bowl and around getting something symmetrical is not easy it's not actually that easy but the first thing I want to say okay so we're gonna cut we're gonna chuck that out we're gonna throw that away and um, we've got a symmetrical bowl all right now with the charcoal background I'm gonna get to uh, a hard pencil, a 2B pencil, and give myself a, a line, and then I'm going to outline it. So I'm going to go with charcoal, holding my paper really tightly, and I'm going to get an edge of the bowl, which is in symmetry because I folded it, I folded it in half. So I'm going to just, just rub that in a little bit so that I can see it. And then we're going to take, take the paper away and start creating... What the heck is that? There's a fly on my finger. Um, so we're going to just... This is very, very uh, simplified. So if you can imagine there is my bowl, so I'm going to set this aside, I'll just throw that out. It's a garden studio so I can do what I want to. <laughs> it's really cool. And I'm going to reconfirm this line. And then I'm going to give myself another line, which is over about there. I think the very most important um, exercise today is going to be indicating how to draw a, a fruit bowl as if it were see-through. So I've got one piece of fruit here, which could be an apple, could be anything. Um, one piece of fruit there, so I'm going to indicate it as if it was see-through, as if it was transparent for the moment. Um, it's not going to stay transparent because we're going to color it. Um, we've got a, but the placement of it is really important. So we're going to try to place it realistically into the the dish or the bowl. 
and um, starting with tonal values, tone, tone and uh, light and dark, and then we're going to go from there. And let's put a little indication of, of a perspective thing there. And then I'm going to divide my page into its horizon. It's kind of a horizon line. Um, it's a little bit like a Matisse. Um, you know, I'm no Matisse, but I'm going to be trying to do something like a Matisse, a Matisse painting, so I'm using these charcoal pencils. These lines are going to be going in a an arc like that, so that I can create a perspective line. So it's really going to be rough in the beginning. Don't be scared, don't be afraid of, of making arbitrary lines with charcoal because um, charcoal you can rub the charcoal off it's, it's fine not a problem the way I'm getting is uh, arbitrary lines on my on my table I'm going to rub them in a little bit give them a bit of strength and if one could imagine there's my painting so it's an A4 painting, very small, but it's it's um, it's a lovely exercise. I I prefer doing exercises um, in terms of the exploration of material. So there's my there's my the beginning of my painting. So what do I do with the background? I'm not entirely sure at the moment, but I do know that there's my bowl. My bowl is in. My dish, my bowl is in and I'm going to be reconfirming those lines. The darker, the darker you make this part of the painting, the better, I think, because you can always bring the light back up again. So we're bringing the light back, back up once the dark is in and um, everything is abstract actually everything is abstract so it, it, it's it's um painting and drawing is about abstraction it's about understanding the interpretation of what you see it's not necessarily about making pretty pictures or anything like that that's that's one of those things this is like right in the front. You can hear it's like outside in the garden and there are birds in the background and hooters and people. And so there are four bunches of fruit, like um, four apples inside a bowl. Fantastic. I've deliberately created an, a, a table edge that is not at an um, absolute equal angle so what I want to do try and do now is reconfirm some of these lines and um, we are just doing the four apples in a bowl so that's a very very simple uh, subject matter do the apples look like they're sitting in the bowl? That's what the point is. The point is like looking at it and saying, okay, cool. Um, we've got the bowl as an abstract uh, shape holding the apples. And then do the apples look like they're sitting in the base of the bowl? So we're going to just really create a super strong line here. Using charcoal and and uh, acrylic paint, the basic acrylic paint is an amazing medium because um, it, it turns out to be an exercise. So you can start seeing, okay, well this apple's in the front, this apple's next, that apple is next, and then that apple is at the back. And there's a there's a transparent line that runs right through there. Uh, then we've got this perspective line that happens 
that uh, occurs on the table of sorts or the surface and then the background is almost um, an abstract concept you know holding on to the back um, tightening up there tightening up there all pointing towards this probably the deepest shadow which is going to be right in there so you put that in with a charcoal piece and then you can almost you can just rub the whole thing rub the whole thing down and um, what we're going to do now is we're going to I'm going to create tonal effect to changing the tones getting the light and dark um, I think that we need to have a little piece in there to create a tone <coughs> and almost get another tone sitting on that corner over there. So there's my, there's my bowl of fruit. What we're, gonna do, what we're going to do now is create a tonal effect throughout. I'm using a, I'm using a medium sized brush and a small brush so I can get into all the little corners and I can cover a lot of ground with the large brush. So now we're going to aim at toning the entire painting. We're gonna get that tone in. And I really am an abstract painter. I like abstraction. And I'm, and I'm, what I'm doing is I'm using white to tone the painting and then eventually going to get into color. The first step for me is to create a tonal value painting. Abstraction is part of it, yes. Um, remembering that um, we've, got, we've got a burnt sienna background and I'm picking up the background and the charcoal with my tone so there we we're starting to get an idea of light and dark light and dark light and dark is important that's the most important in my opinion it's most important um, not so much the color if you turn it into purple it doesn't matter if you if you create a a green painting, a yellow painting, whatever color one chooses to, to do, an orange painting. We're making a painting in tone first, almost like a copy, like a photocopy. Create a photocopy of the image and then color it at the end. So I'm just picking up a little bit of paint. Uh, now what I want to do is point out the, the light direction and the light direction in my, in my head is always coming from this side, the right hand top, the top right hand side, but it can actually come from any side um, depending on what you want. But remembering that the shadow is going to be on this side, if the light is from this side, on the right hand side then the light is going to bounce off here and it's going to be shadowed in there so we got to remember that and then every object is going to have a light on the one side and the dark on the other side the opposite side so really what I want to do is uh, show how easy it is to make a sketch um, a painting sketch of um, of apples in a bowl apples in a bowl <laughs> it's very simple kind of Matisse idea um, and so far we are starting to look good you know I really like what it's turning into uh, all I'm doing is using my charcoal the burnt sienna background 
and then uh, picking up some acrylic paint and creating the tones the tones of what we trying to achieve here uh, very very simple very basic stuff um, so now we're gonna get this like a gray in there the lights coming from this side so the gray is happening on this side of the painting on the left hand side of the painting and then we get a, a tonal it's almost a drawing it's actually not a painting it's a drawing of a painting it's a drawing of an idea now I'm going to switch to my smaller brush so smaller brush to get into the, all the little corners and put that one away and we pick up some white paint and get an get the shape of the bowl get the shape there's a little triangle in here that needs to be sorted out so we just look at that okay and that's picking up light so it's got lights coming from this side it's bouncing back this way the little triangle in there and uh, let's see what happens if we put that in there and then keep going acrylic paint is beautiful because it dries so quickly it dries so quickly um, so you've got this ability to bounce across the painting to get uh, um, the the nice part I'm actually an oil painter I don't, I don't like um, saying that too much because I don't have my oils with me but uh, the idea of having paint that dries quickly is really, really cool so there we go I'm going to put that in the water and um, just let it dry for a while um, all the principles of auto here the what some of the principles of auto here so it's space occupation um, there's a dark area that needs to happen right in here which we're going to sort out as we go along so I'm going to just mark that with a pencil so that we know that there's a dark this is super dark and it could actually become purple purple being one of the darkest colors on the color wheel now what I'm doing is I'm adding light into the painting remember that we're going to we're going to eventually put color it's going to be red and green and all sorts of colors okay and so the light is coming from the right hand top corner so I'm going to lighten everything on the right hand top corner and it's very abstract uh, very difficult to describe it's just four pieces of fruit sitting in a bowl and it's going to have a light side on this side and then a dark side on that side um, on the left hand side it's going to be dark and on the right hand side it's going to be light so that's what we are trying to do and the beauty of acrylic paint is that it dries so quickly that you can you can sketch with it and that's the whole point this side of the bowl is going to be dark and this side of the bowl is going to be light because the lights coming down there so it's going to bounce back off there um, so I'm going to lighten this side of the bowl the probably the most important thing in terms of this exercise is the sketch in the beginning the beginning sketch is really really important I would say make as many dark marks as possible and then turn it lighter so we're going to get this back to dark this little corner here is going to be really really dark it's going to be a little hole in there 
Um, doesn't really matter about the perspective lines. They could be anything, uh, maybe a blue or something. So what I'm doing, I'm just lightening it up using my paintbrush and scrubbing the paint in. What we're going to do now is edge the painting. I'm going to just edge it so that I have a sense of where the side of the painting is. So I'm going to edge it with burnt sienna and black, which I'm not a fan of. <laughs> if you followed my videos you here, I'm not a fan of black paint. It's just not but it's it's it is valuable. It is valuable. Don't don't discard it. Don't uh, write it off. Yeah? But I'm just edging the painting, getting an edge on it. And while I've got this dark colour, I'm going to put this tiny little triangle in that I've been worried about all along. So I'll pick up some dark and then just put this tiny little triangle in there. That's it. Okay, and there's another one there which is super dark. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to color the painting. So what what's happened is um, I've tonally drawn an edge uh, a kind of sketch of a painting and uh, what I'm gonna do now what I'm going to do now is give this painting its its color which is going to be super dark super light there's my tone coming from this side and I'm creating, I'm just sketching it up. So th this is very thinned down acrylic paint. And I'm constantly thinking about sketching. So now what we're going to do, I want to, uh, want to give the color opposite colors to each apple that I've put in the painting. So I'm thinking of green on the one side and then red on the other side and then yellow and then a purple color on the on the opposite side. So as abstract as it might sound it's actually very scientifically thought about in terms of the the palette in terms of the color wheel so there we go starting to starting to happen we get a bit of a broader brush let this all dry and then I'm going to skin it with the color really really important that um, we've gone with a, a tonal value a light white um, middle tones once that's dry then you can you can skin it with the color and um, we're gonna try all these colors green uh, red green red green red opposite so it goes opposite to each other the opposing colors I'm going to continue edging the painting with another layer of black and that's just to get rid of the little lines that are happening along the edge of the black so we get a little bit of water in here and soften up the paint and that's where the edge like super black what the what it does is it uh, blackens the edge and then it lightens up the painting itself so there's always this contrast happening and now we're going to go and we're going to color the painting 
to it. Color is going to come in, as we said, like opposite colors. I think a blue bowl and a green and a red and a yellow and a purple. What I'm doing now is adding the color. So let's make this green. What's really I always find fascinating is when you mix the color on the palette or on the side of the painting the color always looks different when you put it on because of the background. But I'm just going to darken this side of the apple or the fruit add a bit of color inside here out and then the uh, nice thing about glazing is that you can actually go over all the dark areas. So we're going to just um, wash up our brush and add a little bit of red. Let's see, because green is opposite to red. Red is on the one side of the color wheel. And green is on the opposite side of the color wheel. They're contrasting. So we just... Uh, like throw a bit of red in there and the nice thing about this um, exercise is that you can you can virtually do whatever you want to do I'm just gonna thin this water down water the paint down slightly because I would like the the form of the the apple to show so I'm gonna water it down even more and flick it out. The dangerous thing about uh, red is when you add white to it, it becomes pink, and that's not really what I want. I don't want the pink color. I don't want a pink color. So now, while we've got the red going, I'm going to make a purple, sort of a, a plum color, and water that down again and get a plum color like a ripe plum okay and then now the question is what do we do with this one so we've got green red plum and then uh, orange I would say orange is a good one oh, orange is a good color I'm gonna get that orange out it's just a straightforward cadmium orange which I could get with uh, mixing yellow and red together but I'm not going to do that I'm going to take it straight out of the tube and I'm going to orange this one here and again I don't need to worry about the edge of the of the fruit because it's already got its edge we just got a little bit of red coming in here for some reason, I don't know why. You know, coloring this is not difficult. It actually becomes easy. Because I want to contrast, I want to contrast the bowl with the rest of the painting, so I'm going to blue the bowl. It's almost like a see-through kind of color. Um, yeah, and get that as a as a see-through blue, transparent blue, and um, make the darken the dark areas, darken the side of the bowl where the light is um, falling into shadow. And then I think what we must do is we must cool the background and warm the foreground so that's going to be very easy to do cool the background what I, what I want to point out is that um, the the ease uh, at, at which which you can actually paint a painting like this just step by step and get that like a little bit of a little bit of light here, very light, okay, so pick up a bit of color and put some color in. It's becoming abstract, which is which is really my painting style. I like abstract. 
the, the concept of it is cooling the background and warming the foreground. So we're going to pick up some blue and just put it in there. And you end up with a, a painting. It's like really cool, man. Give it a little bit of a highlight here, which is an opposite color. Give it a little highlight on this side of this apple. The bowl of fruit is what we're doing. And give it a little highlight over here, which could be argued that that's a reflected light. It's coming off the other apple. Um, let's highlight this edge of the bowl and then what we're going to do is I'm going to warm up I'm going to warm up the foreground and the best way of doing that I find is to use burnt sienna now for the warming up of the foreground I'm going to put in a little bit of burnt sienna and burnt sienna is where we started if you remember that's how that's how we started we got the ground the ground of the painting was actually burnt sienna so i'm picking up burnt sienna and i'm warming up the foreground so these are basic principles of art you've got warm coming forward and you've got cool going back and it really doesn't matter what color you use i'm going to add white to this because the light coming in from the side and I'm going to shut all these little, um, these black charcoal marks down a little bit. That's how easy it is to do it at home. You can do it at home. You can do it while you're in COVID-19 and you've got nothing to do at home. And just separate this. Separate this by tonally changing it. And then uh, let's throw in a little bit of burnt sienna into the blue, which is still kind of wet. So the light's coming from this side. Your shadows are sitting on that side. It would actually be very interesting if we put a shadow mark in here and create the bowl's shadow. So that's what I'm going to do. Take a bit of a risk on it. Let's get some dark color. Um, same brush, I'm using very cheap brushes. I'm not, not using expensive brushes at all. And get some color. And let's just put some shadow in here and see what happens. Goes all the way out to the back, to the outside of the frame. Wow, that's really nice. I love it. it gives me a chance to edge the painting and give it a, a shadow that creates form on the painting so get, just getting some edges on there and edges on there you see how that works hey that's cool I'm amazed Let's get a little, this little triangle that's happening here is going to be heavily shadowed. And there we go. That's the finished painting. Ba -ba, -da Fruit bowl. I love it. A frame uh, becomes a very valuable thing actually. Because it, it edges your painting. So we've got the edge of the painting which is dark like that. Now I'm going to put a lighter frame and I'm going to put my wooden frame around it and give you an idea of what the finished painting could look like. Or we take the inner out of it and keep the dark edge of the painting. The dark edge of the painting with a wooden frame. I mean that's just that's <laughs> so cool, so cool, and very easy. It's a sketch. Treat it as a sketch.